So I wanted to read a book about caterpillars. And this is The Secret Life of the Woolly Bear Caterpillar. And it's by Lawrence Pringle. So in the library, it is, let's see if I can do that, Star PRI, Star PRI for Lawrence Pringle. I know this in a caterpillar, caterpillar voice because the PRI is the first three letters of the author's last name. And let me find the first page. Secret Life of the Woolly Bear Caterpillar. Bella walks in a jungle of grasses and clovers and wildflowers hidden from sight. She begins a secret life. Bella is no ordinary caterpillar. She is a bended woolly bear caterpillar, one of the most popular and beloved of all insects. Bella's body is covered with black hairs called setae, and at her front and rear ends, a band of reddish with uh, black hairs at her front and rear ends, and a band of reddish orange hairs around her middle. She looks funny, but her setae are not soft at the touch. They feel like the really stiff bristles of a brush. As Bella walks, her body undulates like an ocean wave, and she seems to flow over the ground, but her walk is complicated. She moves 16 legs of two different kinds. Just behind her head are three pairs of true legs on her thorax or chest, each tipped with a single claw. When Bella chews on a leaf, these six legs are good for holding the leaf steady. They also help her climb. The rest of her legs are pro legs on the rear part of her body, her abdomen. They support her body and help move it along. These stumpy pro legs have small hooks called crotchets at their end that grip whatever is beneath Bella as she walks. Bella grabs a clover leaf and begins to chew. Let's see if I can get a better picture of that. There we go. Begins to chew with her strong, sharp mandibles. Behind the mandibles on each side of her head are six small eyes called stimata. Bella's stimata really can't see details very clearly, but they can detect motion and sometimes danger. Something is moving quickly toward her, and in an instant, Bella curls her body into a tiny bear ball and stays still. A garter snake slithers close and stops. Its forked tongue flicks in and out, in and out, smelling. Since garter snakes don't usually eat haired caterpillars, the snake moves on. Bella uncurls her body and continues to search for food. She finds it with her keen sense of smell. Many tempting odors waft through the air. The meadow where her life began is a thicket of grasses and clovers and plantains and dandelions and asters and goldenrods and more. And to Bella, they all taste good. Bella may be a tiny caterpillar, but she has a big appetite. Day after day, she eats and eats and eats and eats, and whenever she feeds, she leaves caterpillar poo, caterpillar droppings called frass. At night, or when it rains, she rests in a sheltered place. One day, Bella stops eating. She lies still and bends her head, and from the spinneret on the bottom of her head, Bella lets out some silk. She spins a mat on the ground and then hooks the ends of her legs onto the mat, holding tight, and her body begins to quiver, and her exoskeleton splits open. Bella is molting. She wiggles and wriggles and wriggles and writhes, breaking free of her old skin. She even sheds the ex exoskeleton of her old head. Her new bigger head is brown at first, and then it darkens as it hardens. And she walks away, a bigger woolly bear and with a wider or reddish orange middle than before. But one thing has not changed. She is hungry. As summer days pass, Bella molts three more times. Each time she grows bigger, and each time more of the middle of her body becomes reddish orange. And living on the ground in the jungle of meadow plants, Bella's life is still a secret. No human sees her, though nearly all wild creatures at night. She walks past ants, sow bugs, and field crickets. She eats near grasshoppers and stink bugs and spiders. And one cool September morning, Bella is startled by a sudden shadow. Bella!
Bella feels herself, oops, let's come back. Lifted off the ground, a blue jay holds her tightly in its beak. The jay could swallow Bella whole. But something about Bella, perhaps the bristly feel of her body, stops the bird and it drops Bella and flies off. Bella lies perfectly still. And when it seems safe, she uncoils. She lifts her head to sniff the air. Ooh, some tasty leaves are ahead. She hurries toward them. As autumn days pass, Bella's world changes. The air grows colder, especially at night, and sometimes in the morning, she lies still and warms her body with energy from the rising sun. As some leaves change color and fall to the ground, Bella searches for green leaves to eat. After two months of life, she is nearly two inches long with a broad band of reddish orange hairs around her middle. Then she stops eating and sets off on a journey. Bella walks for days through a small forest across lawns and gardens, and each night she curls up in a hideout and begins to explore again. And now when she's a good-sized caterpillar on the move, she's most likely to be seen by people. She crosses a wide, barren space, and she, as she begins to cross, something huge rushes towards her, roars overhead, and then disappears. Whoosh! A swift swirl of wind ruffles Bella's hairs. She keeps on walking, but she doesn't know about the dangers of streets and cars, but someone does. Fingers grab Bella and pick her up. Nestled in the palm of a hand, she is carried safely across the road and set down gently in a field. And left alone, she waits and then uncurls her body and begins to walk again. At the edge of a field, a rocky wall rises in front of her. And there, Bella finds what she has searched for, a secret, safe shelter. She curls up under some dead leaves and stays there day and night, all through the winter. Snow covers the stone wall. Within Bella's body, a within Bella's body, a chemical called glycerol keeps ice from forming in her cells. Frosty winds may be blow, but Bella is asleep and alive and well. And in the warming days of spring, Bella awakens but moves very little. She waits and waits and waits until grasses and dandelions and other spring shoots and sprouts grow. Only then does she leave the stone wall and begin to eat. She feasts for a few days and then hides in an open space among the stones. There, using the hairy cite from her body and silk from her spinneret, she weaves a cocoon that encloses her whole body. And inside the cocoon, Bella molts one last time. This time, she changes into a smooth, shiny pupa. And inside the pupa, amazing changes happen to all of her cells that once made up Bella's caterpillar body an adult moth's body begins to take shape. All of these changes are secret, hidden from sight inside her cocoon that's hidden inside the stone wall. On a warm spring evening, the cocoon begins to wriggle and shake. It opens at one end and an adult moth crawls out. Once free, it holds on to the cocoon as its wings spread dry and become strong. Then the moth walks out onto the open and with the very first beat of her wings, she lifts off the ground and flies into the starry night sky. Bella's life as a woolly bear egg, egg, caterpillar and pupa is over. And now she begins a new kind of life as an adult Isabella tiger moth. And the nights to come, she will sip nectar from flowers, find a mate, and then lay a cluster of pearly eggs. And within each egg will develop a banded woolly bear caterpillar. And from each tiny egg, a tiny caterpillar will wriggle out. And each one will be ready to start its own secret life. And there's a close-up picture of Bella and the front of her face and her mandibles. And I just... I like woolly bear caterpillars. They're some of my favorite. There we go. And I'm going to stop this.